Matthew chapter 11, verse 15 says, He who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Now, you would think that the writer of this passage is assuming that we who have ears don't always hear. Now, everyone has a wonderful set. Some of us have a little larger than others. But here, we do have ears, and they are for the purpose of hearing. But somehow in the journey of life, we miss out on hearing. I can tell you that as a father. My kids, quite often, had what we call selective hearing. You know, when it came to saying things like, you know, hey, I need you to take out the trash. What, what, what? Can't hear you. Uh, you know, do your homework. I can't hear you either. I didn't hear that one. Uh, get up early for school or just get out of bed, period was a difficult one. Let those who have ears, well, they didn't always hear. Just like the wife who says to the husband, you weren't even listening, were you? And the husband says, I thought that's a pretty weird way to start a conversation. Or how about the wife saying, you never listen to me. You only hear what you want to hear. Sure, honey, I'll have a beer. Sometimes we just aren't hearing. And hearing is actually more than just the sound coming in our ears. It's understanding. This text is inviting us to a powerful spiritual journey of learning to hear and understand, to comprehend, to take in, to embrace, to do much more than just hearing the vibration of sound, but to take it in and take it to heart. That which we might hear, we understand, we comprehend, we experience, we live out. And when we do this, you know what? We become even better at hearing. We become more clear. We become more sensitive and we become more in tune with all that we need to hear in this world because hearing is a receptivity of the mind. It's being open to understanding, being open. We sing that chorus here. I am opening up to the good. Sometimes we just get about singing it over and over again. We're just all about singing the words and we're not realizing, wait a minute, are you opening up? Are you opening up your life, your mind, your consciousness, your spirit? Are you opening up to the old good that wants to flow in you, through you, and for you? Well, that's what it means to hear, to understand, to be open to receiving. And this is a time to be open. This is a season of being open that is far greater and more important possibly than we've ever had before. Being open to hearing, being open to understanding, being open to experiencing, being open to greater clarity in this journey of understanding the very voice of God, where the universe is always speaking to us and is speaking to us even now. For you see, life is not what appears to be. It's what is showing up inside of us that we're seeing. Let's just talk about that for a minute. For our role is to see or to look or to be beyond the appearances of the world around us. Sometimes we say that phrase, we can't see the forest through the trees because we're so caught up in all these other things. We can't see what's really going on. We can't see the big picture. And life is all about seeing beyond the appearances, but seeing the greater picture of what's going on right now. What's going on right now in our world? Right now, a lot of fear, a lot of panic, a lot of isolation. A lot of people saying, this is terrible. This is the worst thing. They're uh, now thinking almost like Chicken Little, the sky is falling. And we are preoccupied in ways with the minor details rather than the major details of what's really going on in our world. What's going on here is that the universe is speaking to us. That's right. God is speaking to us through everything what we're experiencing and everything that's going on. And we have to ask ourselves, What's going on and what is the universe saying? Because is this our time to shine? Is this our time to manifest? Is there a time to demonstrate? Is this our time to be the light of the world? This morning I received a call from someone who said, you're not having church, are you? You're not gathering. You're not coming together as a community, are you? I said, wait a minute. This is our time to shine. This is our time to practice what we preach. Of all things, when we claim that all things are working together for good, and then all of a sudden, but not right now, not in the coronavirus, it's not working for our good. We need to panic. We need to run in fear. We need to isolate. We need to separate. It doesn't mean that we don't need to be responsible or respectful. It also means that this is our time to shine 
This is our time as a community, as a church, as believers, those who experience this powerful knowledge and understanding, those who have heard and understand, now is your time. This is your moment to speak your truth and to allow those who are in panic to hear, why are you at peace? Why are you calm? Why are you not fretting? Why are you not in line at the grocery store looking for all the toilet paper in the world that you don't need, but that you think you may need? Why are you not stealing hand sanitizer from other public places? And of all things, of course, take your purse and load up on toilet paper from the local gas station because there's not enough to go around. You see, I, someone said to me, that's what I do. I go around in panic and I'm going from place to place, just taking the toilet paper from every public location. We have it here as people want to take the toilet paper out of the stalls. Uh, why? We're in fear, that's why. But here's our time. This is our moment to speak that which we know to be true, to demonstrate, to reveal to the world around us, wait a minute, we're people of faith, not people of fear. We're grounded. But we hear the universe speaking. And to those who have ears, let them hear. The universe is saying, let me reveal the glory of God. Let me reveal it in miraculous ways. Let me demonstrate through people who are of great faith, who trust, who believe, who say, I'm standing on solid ground, not in fear and not running in any kind of sense of stress and anxiety. This may be your greatest opportunity to show what you believe, to demonstrate because let me ask you this, where does this fear come from that so many people are experiencing and demonstrating? Where does it come from? It comes from within. It comes from within each and every one of us because no circumstance can make us think a certain way. We choose to think that way. Nobody's forcing fear on you. But there is this feeling that we then welcome it, accept it, because, well, my neighbors are afraid. I should be afraid. Other people are afraid. We should be afraid. Other churches are afraid. We should be afraid too. You see, we get caught up in it as we entertain fear. But where does that fear come from? It comes from within. Nothing outside us can activate our thinking. Nothing has control of your thoughts. Only you do. So we have to ask, where is that fear I'm generating that uh, which is fearful? It's coming from within me. And we are thinking... Uh, what we are thinking is really creating our reality and it's shaping it. So if we're fear-based people, we create a reality that's fear-based. And so let me tell you that the only thing that can come out of you is what's in you. Let me illustrate that. Say you got a lemon. You squeeze that lemon. What comes out of that lemon? Coke? No. Wine? No. Tomato juice? No. What comes out of the lemon? Lemon juice. What comes out is only what's within. And let me tell you this moment right now, the world is being squeezed. And we're discovering what's inside that's coming out right now. Wow, think about it. The world is being squeezed. Our country is being squeezed. And we're coming out. And what's coming out? Fear. Fear for everybody. Because it's generated from within. And is it a time for us to speak the words of peace? Isn't it time for us to wake up as Jesus rose out of the boat in the midst of a storm when the disciples were tear fearful and terrified and rise, you know, just saying, Jesus, help us. We're going to die in the storm. And Jesus says, peace, be still. Isn't that our calling right now? What is the universe saying to us? It's time for you to speak peace. It's time for you to demonstrate. Here's your showcase. Here's your opportunity. Here's the opportunity for you to reveal the glory of God and that which you believe, that which you practice, that which you teach, that which you embrace. Here's your time to shine. For the universe has given you the stage, shall we say. Step up on that soapbox and now project for those around you that which you believe to be true. Let them feel it, sense it. Because what happens is life is squeezing us it's revealing what's in us. And this is our time to be open. I'm asking you, what kind of light then are you, are you in this world? Are you one of these lights that's shining uh, brilliantly or a light that's consumed with panic and the rush for self-preservation 
Are you one of those? Or are you the light? It says, I am the light of God, showing, revealing, demonstrating perfect peace in all ways. For being open means that we require all, we remove all barriers to our life. This is our time to be open to the universe, speaking through us, removing all barriers so that the universe might truly use us. That universe be God, right? God is everywhere. There's not a spot where God is not. So the word universe really embraces God. So the universe is speaking, God is speaking, all that is divine is speaking to us and saying, be open, remove those barriers, remove those things that may block, unlock the doors. You know how it is when a business says we're open, you know, they put a sign out front, they open up the shades, the windows are clear, the lights are on, they make it easy for people to come in and be welcomed. So that's the same thing what we're doing now is in our spirit, I am opening up to the good. I am opening my life up completely. There are no barriers. There's no fear. There's no a sense of stress or anxiety in my life. I am open to hear everything that the universe is speaking to me, telling me right now. Because God's going to use you to bring peace and calm and serenity to the world around you if you're open, if you're listening. It may be a neighbor. It may be a family member. It may be someone else in the congregation. It may be your partner, husband, or wife. It may be some stranger that you encounter or even someone on Facebook that you might be there to offer peace and be the example and the embodiment of peace in the midst of any storm. So that is our calling to be open, and this is our time to do so. It's time for us to do a little spring cleaning of our thoughts. And if you are uh, being uh, sequestered in your home or if you're, for some reason your work is canceled and you've got lots of free time, let me tell you what, it's time to do a little spring cleaning. I'm not talking about your house. I'm talking about your thoughts and saying, what is going on in my thoughts during this time? Are there thoughts of fear that need to be removed? Are there beliefs that I'm holding? that I don't really know that they work for me? Are there beliefs that I need to strengthen within my heart and life? You may ask yourself, have I come to this moment to play small? Or am I going to play big? Here's your chance. Here's your chance. Do you play small? Oh, we, uh, you know, I know we practice and believe that God is doing all kinds of good things. and work, But you know what? I just, that's not really true for me. You know, I'm going to remain in fear. I'm going to panic. And I'm going to be afraid. Or we have to ask ourselves, are we in this state of spring cleaning where we might clean out anything that is a distraction for our lives? Because let me ask you this. Is this the worst disaster or the greatest opportunity? Wow. I was hit with this. Just a realization. Is this a disaster or a great opportunity for us to shine, to demonstrate? We know the story of Lazarus, whom was ill, and Mary and Martha called for Jesus to come and heal. Jesus took his time, and when he arrived, Lazarus was already dead. And you may think this was the great disaster, the finality. But Jesus saw this as an opportunity to practice what he believed, to demonstrate everything that he was speaking about and preaching about to call forth Lazarus in a resurrection power to come forth the tomb and to rise up and to conquer death. You see, this too is our Lazarus moment. This too is our opportunity to demonstrate, to reveal, to speak of great truth, to show faith that is grounded in spiritual teaching and to demonstrate it to the world that they may see it. Is this the world's disaster or is it the great opportunity? Because when you follow media, sometimes it's full of fear-based stuff. But along with it, they're reporting that in Wuhan, China, after so many years of noise in this busy city where this virus originated, in the silence, you can hear the birds. I can hear the birds again. Wow. We didn't know there were birds, many people said. Wow, listen to all the birds in the stillness. When the city is called to stop, is this the disaster or great opportunity? Because after just a few weeks of, of 
quiet within that major city, the smoke and fumes began to lift of all this pollution. And they, wow, we have clear skies. We have something amazing happening within our city. I didn't know the skies could be so blue. They were traditionally so gray. Is this the worst disaster or the greatest opportunity when the people of Italy are gathering together and standing on their balconies and singing to one another across the streets? We're hearing the news stories of creating community. I love the sound in those close quartered streets and those little cobblestone passageways echoing back and forth. And I can imagine a choral harmony just being created in beautiful ways as people begin to sing together who never sang together. Is this a disaster or a great opportunity? Then we hear of a hotel in West Ireland that's offering free meals and delivery to households in need. We're hearing of churches and synagogues and temples that are preparing to welcome uh, the homeless in shelters. And we here at City of Light are seeing it a great opportunity. Today, a family person, a person came by for food. We gave them groceries, even though this isn't our regular service time but they were preparing to go to work and they needed food. We're here and we're going to be open all through this time serving the homeless and providing food for those in need. Is this a disaster or a great opportunity? Because all over the world, people are slowing down all of a sudden and reflecting about what is the greater good that can happen in our lives. People sharing. People joking about toilet paper and saying, hey, can you spare me a roll? Hey, buddy, can you spare me a roll? Uh, you know, but it's a jest of love and it's the laughter that we're creating within us as we're thinking about how we might work together. Suddenly the world is filled with compassion. My phone is ringing off hook. Neighbors calling me and saying, do you and Robert need anything? Do you need anything? Because we're there for you. And I think about the incredible bond that's coming together in community that's being enhanced. Is this a disaster or is this God's gift to us? Is the universe speaking to us? For those who have ears to hear, we're hearing. Ah, yes, here's your opportunity. Go forth and shine. Demonstrate the glory of God to the world around you. This is not a time of being fearful. This is a time of expressing and demonstrating. There are so many people in our world that don't quite understand that the hearing aspect within our journey of our life, hearing, and noting, Spirit is speaking, now's your opportunity, go forth and do something. You know, hear the Spirit speaking to us. We hear the gentle voice of that which is symbolized by a shepherd, a voice within us, calling us for the highest and best. We know that this biblical example provided for us is that of a shepherd that guides the sheep with love and tenderness and offering the rod and the staff as instruction for the flock to go here, to go there, to the greener pastures and to the still waters that are provided for them, as the psalmist paints such a beautiful word picture for us. The sheep hear and know the shepherd's voice. Because the more that they hear it, first it may be a vibration, and what is that? But then the more that they experience it, the shepherd's guiding, tapping with his staff, showing us the way. The more they hear it, the more they experience, the more they understand it. And the more clarity comes to them that the sheep, when they hear the voice, they're attuned to it. So it is within our life that the Bible stories are there over and over again, repeated. You find stories of faith, stories of power, uh, stories of overcoming, stories of wonderful victory, repeated over and over again within the Bible, and just the characters change. Why is it so? Because we have such a difficult time hearing and understanding. It's repeated in different shapes and forms over and over again, these themes. Until we are understanding and until we see ourselves that this is our story, and then we experience being, example, Daniel and the lion's den. A story offered to us of Daniel in the worst case scenario, being lowered into the den of hungry lions, but having had a faith that sustains him, he is not harmed. That's our story. When we hear that story, when we hear it and then we embrace it, when we experience it as our story, then we begin to understand it and we're clear, our ears are clearer 
in tune and in alignment with hearing even more. How about David and Goliath? When we begin to think, wait a minute, you're David. Yes, that's right. And the world around us is Goliath. This virus may seem like a great giant that wants to overcome us, but with great faith and confidence, we release it. We let go of it, as we sang today, and we destroy it in heart and mind. How about we experience then embrace the story of the children of Israel facing the Red Sea and not knowing how to cross over, how to make, and then the waters part for them. You see, we become much more proficient at hearing when we begin to experience these things. And boy, have we experienced these things. Because if this is our opportunity to be Daniel and claim this, to be David and claim this, to be the children of Israel and claim all these things, because we've experienced it just the same. How many of you remember a tropical storm, Ivan, a hurricane that hit our former building and flooded our facilities? And we thought, could we have church? Oh, we had church even in the midst of a storm. You see, we have experienced the Daniel. We've experienced the David. We've experienced the children of Israel experiences. We've experienced them, and it should make us even better at hearing. Because in the midst of Hurricane Ivan's tropical storm that destroyed our facilities, the Spirit of God says, Lo, I am with you always. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Wow, we experienced that. How about when our air conditioning and heating went out in the sanctuary? Did we not experience a David, a Daniel-type experience, a children of Israel experience, when everything went out and we thought, how are we going to exist in this large sanctuary with no heat? And no air conditioning. We got big fans to blow the air in. And we're blowing that hot air in. That wasn't just the pastor. Blowing the hot air in and blowing the cool air out. And so it was that we began to create this wonderful way to, to exist and overcome that which seemed like a giant in our life. And how about even this building, Wendy Cab County, wanted to charge us $30,000 from taxes because they couldn't realize we were a nonprofit facility. And we thought, how will we ever make a way? And we overcame. So when we look at this, what the point is this, that the Spirit has been speaking and offering you experiences for you to understand and know that God has already spoken to you in the past. Are you not better at hearing it now? Have you not heard the voice like a sheep enough over and over again to hear the voice of the shepherd that you recognize it? even in the midst of your chaos and even in the midst of a crisis, even in the midst of this coronavirus epidemic, we should be listening and hearing, as Matthew 28, 20 says, teaching them to observe all things, whatsoever I have commanded you, I am with you even to the end of the world. How about 2 Timothy 4, 2? Preach, publicly go out and proclaim, meaning go out and begin to express it. In this season, be preach and go out and proclaim the good news. How about 1 Timothy 4.12? Be thou an example of the believers in word and conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. Wow. Is this not what the universe is saying to us? All that the scriptures have offered to us as an opportunity to let the glory of God is now given to us. Here's our time. This is our moment to be open, to shine, to reveal to the world that which we believe. There's a beautiful story in the Old Testament of Samuel, a young boy whose mother gave him over to service of God and uh, to serve in the priesthood. And there he stayed in the uh, priest quarters with Eli as a young apprentice to learn the journey of being that uh, prophet and priest. Samuel's asleep. One night he hears the voice of God or voice calling him. He thinks it's Eli and he gets up to Eli and says, Eli, here I am. And Eli says, I didn't call you. Go back to bed. Second time he hears the voice calling Samuel. And Samuel gets out of bed and says, Eli, here I am. Samuel, I didn't call you. Go back to bed. And the third time, Eli, here I am. And Eli says, I didn't call you. And then he suddenly realizes there, that listen to that inner voice. Samuel, listen to your consciousness. Here, right where you are, I want you to say, speak, Lord, 
for your servant is listening. Beautiful example for us in our lives. The Spirit of God is calling. The universe is speaking. God is offering you this opportunity. Are you ready to say, here I am, use me? Here I am, speak, Lord, show me the way. Here I am, I'm open to it. Here, right now, let me be in tune to the I am. Here I am, let me present myself. Use me, work through me, speak through me. And as Samuel began to say this, Sir, speak, for your servant is listening, he let the ears that God gave him be attuned to hear. To those who have ears, let them hear. You have ears. You're invited to hear, not just to hear sounds, but to be open to understanding. And we are greater aligned and in tune with the voice of this universe as we go through experiences. We're going through an experience right now. Here's our chance to go through this and hear the voice of God demonstrating, saying, I'm with you. I'm for you. I'm around you. I'm in you. I am going to be there with you throughout all things. I will never leave you nor forsake you. So let me invite you to this perfect peace. That this is your time. This is a gift. This is a blessing. This is an opportunity. Oh, yes, we're not overlooking the challenges, the health issues, and that there may be those who transition as a result of this virus. But we know in the midst of every storm is an opportunity to reveal the divine presence. Here is your opportunity. This is your time. Let's shine. Amen.